car and we will need to have a discussion later about your unauthorized removal of one of our specimens. What's this now? It is not appropriate for a body to remain uncremated for longer than a week. Not appropriate? We're talking about evidence material. I attempted a burial ceremony. It was uh, cut short by the one I tried to bury by my daughter. What? I, 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 I'm sorry, what? She is still alive. alive. Are you saying that there has been another incident of Ellis attacking someone? Yes. We will be given the briefing in full and we go and uh, debrief her ourselves. It hurts me to say this, but if I may ask a, a practical question here. It has only been, what, two days now? Since the last time she drank from another person. I'm talking about Michael. Yeah, and at this rate of feeding? And what happens if we cut out her feeding completely in this regard? And just feed her normal food? Go cold turkey, if you will. If indeed it is some sort of addiction... I don't know yet, Paul. That's an interesting line of inquiry, but I haven't started it yet. If we keep her restrained and do not allow her to partake in any of this and just feed her normal food what will happen 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 this is red moon role playing yes so uh, anna if you would be so kind as to start cross referencing uh, possible bookings that could have been made by william gilbert uh, of other attacked establishments and uh, Shirley if you would prepare restraints that we have and uh, possibly with the help or with anyone who would deem themselves capable of starting to put the now seemingly comatose suspended suspect in those restraints we will attend to Ellis I uh, would like to I would like to volunteer a security detail for Alice. He says as he uh, feeds a um, fat magazine into an M16 marked with a red piece of tape in sender ammo. I think that could be uh, wise. I uh, look at him for a moment. I do not think that is necessary, Sergeant Shirley. I'll be right outside. No, I would prefer that you take care of the other suspect and put her in constraints, ready for interrogation. Yes, sir, I would leave this right here, he says, leaving the automatic rifle on the briefing table. Thank you. Goes out and slams the door, noticeably irritated. Very well then, I will quickly collect my sample. And I leave the briefing room and make my way to the lab where my fresh, hopefully, at least as fresh as we can make it, donated blood sample shall be. They're where they're supposed to be. In the lab, in order, according to blood type. There's about half a gallon, maybe, in total. Yes. Again, this particular sample I've procured in the hour and tried to conclude from the early interview that Ellis did seem very unsatisfied with true cold storage. Let's see if it does make a difference if it's slightly fresher. I will collect the sample, meet up with Paul, nod and say, All right, Paul, are you ready for her debriefing? You find me outside of her cell and I'm turning over the uh, clip in my hand of the uh, automatic rifle. What do I see in these, uh, in the ammunition? It's, um, it's high explosive rounds. Hmm. I put it back into the weapon and I put it around the corner from the cell. Uh, yes. Let's um, have a talk. The door to the cell is thick. 
It's easy to forget when you look at the beige innocence of these corridors that this place is meant to hold refugees waiting for their ticket, their ticket back home to an uncertain future. But the security measures in place, once you know what you're looking for, are not that dissimilar from a prison. The door in its current state can only be opened from the outside by the combination of a key card and a mechanical lock. You of course have the key card. I enter the code, swipe the key card, and enter. The lock pulls back with a metallic wang. She's in the corner, huddled compact, like a shadow in shadows. A small window has been blocked by pushing a pillow into the opening, blanking out any light from the outside, even from the halogen lights of the yard. Is the light on inside the cell? No, it's dark and just a patch of darker darkness in the corner where you know that she is. The cameras are low light, so you could see her well enough there, but here, straining the eyes. I step in a little. I kneel down slightly and say, Sergeant Ellis? Yes. Awake, are we? Apparently. Good. I've brought you something. And I move forward a little and then sort of slide that blood bag over. It's, uh, how does it feel, Martin? I'm not really hungry right now, right? You are not. You can intellectually understand that this is sustenance, but how you feel about it? There's not that craving, not at all. It's, you know, you're full, you're fine. And that's perhaps the most horrible part. Being fine, feeling so stable, even though you have done something fucking horrible. The blood doesn't speak to you the way it does. No, thank you. No, thank you. Hmm. I make a note. You're saying that today, all that talk of a hunger, all that energy, and you are fine. Yes. I'm not hungry right now. I frown. I go over to collect the blood sample, saying, well, then I'm going to have to take that back. I don't think it will be valid in a few hours anyway. Very well. As you go forward to take that, I uh, turn on the light in the cell and I close the door behind us. Ouch, that's bright light. Ow. It makes me kind of flinch and uh, sit up and uh, close my eyes and uh, visibly very uncomfortable. I look at uh, her hmm. flinching backwards and uh, in my mind I know how it is when you've been in darkness and you... Well, it hurts your eyes, but she seems to be hurting in her old body. How are you feeling? It will be alright. Yeah, and it passes surprisingly quickly, and it's surprisingly easy to stay awake. Should be down, dead, sleeping by now, but the flowing power of that life you took seems to whisk all that fatigue away. I'm fine, Paul. I don't know why, but I'm fine. Uh, physically. Well, I... Would you like to give me your story of what happened from the moment you awoke and found my message that we were down at the pub? Yeah. 
yeah uh i was i was i was coming i was going to to go uh to go to you but i woke up and i was so hungry it's it's so hard to explain paul it's it's like this madness inside your whole body and you can't think about anything anything else than hunger and I I don't know I I thought that maybe uh, I was I don't know what I was thinking I, 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 uh, shit fuck so I went to a bar uh Why didn't you come to us? I say this in a soft, mild tone almost. I look at you, pain in my eyes and my face. Paul, your family. Do you think I would even in the slightest, you know what happened later. Did you want, would you have wanted me to to risk, to, to, to put your family at risk in that way? I, I... I need... I would have hoped that our presence perhaps could dampen the... No, no, it's, it doesn't work like that, Paul. You don't understand this this drive, this, this hunger is... I think... Okay, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not Francis. I don't, I don't have the, 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 uh, the knowledge or... But I think that the longer I wait between feeding that the worse it gets and that the, the harder it is to to control so <sighs> and it was it had to be it had to be someone's blood yes nothing else you 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 feel hungry but you could you cannot there's no f- i tried to order a, a meal but it, it it tastes like ashes in my mouth it's vile and horrible and it's it's nothing it won't do anything for me but you fuck this go this on then with your story you 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 went to a pub you said i went to you a ordered pub. a meal and then i thought that i i don't know what uh, fuck I, I don't know what i was thinking if i could but it, it didn't it don't matter because i saw someone watching me and 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 I was being followed by a person. Um, I frown a little, and I just say, "Indeed." And who was the individual following you, Alice? I am coming to that, Francis. But Paul, this this won't be easy for you to hear, and I want you to maybe you should sit down, please. <sighs> I do sit down on the bed, I look at you questioningly, and it sort of slips out of me. Was it one of them? No. Did they try and contact you? No, Paul. The one that was following me... ...was Sarah. Sarah? I followed her, or I chased her, because I wanted to know why... ...why she was following me if she what was going on did you talk to her early during the day yes wait I try to call myself and take a deep breath as far as I know she is fine we had a brief conversation in a taxi was that why she was so silent when she got home in the morning was that why she didn't say a word during the entire ride home Nothing happened. What did she say? Nothing happened. She uh, she wanted to talk about you. Uh, about her doubts about what you are doing. <laughs> uh, but That's I, good. No. She, that's good. I, I'm happy that she turned to you. No. She... She is confused, Paul, and... Frankly, I told her to... (laughs) I 
I go quiet for a little while. What? You you told her to what? <sighs> oh shit. <laughs> what Alice? Is I it... told her <laughs> I told her that she needed to tell you off. Actually. She is a grown up. She is over 18 and she should be making decisions about her own life. But she loves you so much. And she is so afraid that you would disapprove of her. And this is a conversation that is, we don't have time for that now, but your daughter is hurting. And she's hurting because you think that if she showed you who she really is, you wouldn't accept her. You see me uh, closing my eyes for a second and just breathing. And as I open them again, it's uh, it's with that cold, professional look. Anyway, you should talk to her. I seem to think of maybe saying something more, but then take a breath. And the thing is that when she, when we talked, I, I was. It was getting worse, so we couldn't talk for long because I had to get out of there. So I went out of there and I ran uh, and I left her there in that cab. And then I ran into this man and uh, I saw his, uh, his uh, ear device and I just got so angry. I was so hungry and so angry and I I took him and I killed him. I drank everything that he had is in his body and I and afterwards I was so disgusted with myself and for losing control. I oh fuck. This is the second this is the second person I've killed. And I don't know if I can live like this. I, I don't know if I... <sighs> I look between the two of you. Who was he? One of ours. Unfortunately an ill-chosen asset on behalf of Kitawara anyway. Hmm. Someone to look after, Ellis? Someone to watch her. Kitawara was concerned, rightfully so. I okayed the operation because I was eager to see a test performed. And unfortunately, the test. I looked at Ellis. Well, you know how the test went. You told me so yourself. Why wasn't I informed of this? It was happening during a time where you were unavailable. I'm not entirely sure why, but you were not able to be contacted. Not to mention, it all happened very suddenly. Ellis leaving the hotel, trailing your daughter, which we found out later, or was very in the moment. You said she was following you? Correct, yes. She was, but I trailed her afterwards. We assumed, like you did, Paul, that it was a suspect. In fact, we were having our eyes on her initially. Hmm. But it does seem as if it was all a personal matter, so I, for one, don't feel the need to continue that line of questioning anymore. While you are talking about this, you can see how my eyes are, like, in the corner, it's... They are getting red, and it's uh, starting to drip down from my eyes. Tears? She's bleeding from her eyes. From the eyes. This reaction, combined with her current sensitivity to the light, I've been analysing her for a few days now. Was she like this before? Is this new? There's never been bleeding from her eyes before. Alice, are you alright? 
Physically, I mean. No. What's happening? I am not all right. You... I... I don't know if I told you about my brother, Michael. No. Yeah. He killed himself, 999. And since that's... I've been... having strong opinions about suicide, as you can understand. <laughs> he was very close to me and I loved him dearly. But these few hours since I ripped that man apart, I have been thinking that maybe it would be better if I just, you know, n stopped being here, but you know, I, I don't know how to kill myself. Ah, uh, uh, fuck. I don't know what would kill me. So maybe you will have to do it. The blood is flowing. The blood is flowing from her eyes now. Staining her shirt and the floor. What did I do? What did I do to deserve this? Uh, I know I have no right to feel bad about myself because two people are dead because of me, but... but uh, this is this is this is unbearable. This is <laughs> come now. This is this is hell. I'm in hell. You will need to rest. I understand that. When we found you the other day, you were almost you were you were completely gone, seemingly dead, in the bathtub. And. You've been awake for a long time now, and if this sun has the same effect on you as other specimens... I'm sorry to hear about your brother, I had no idea. Try to... Try to rest. We have a full debrief... Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. ...for you. Paul, I just told you this because it doesn't have nothing to do with my brother, just that... ...normal times I would never... Ever consider anything like that, and if anyone that I loved talked about that, I would beat them up. But you have to, you, you have to help me. I, I cannot live like this. I cannot continue kill people. Now, as I keep telling you, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, Ellis. With my experimentation, I believe I will be able to keep you more maintained. Unfortunately, it is going to require a bit of a loss of your free liberties. And as I... I don't care. Hmm. Do it. Whatever it is. Yes. Do it. Well, to start with, the ritual we just did today is going to be done every day, or maybe even evening, actually, would be better. Daily. We're going to have to see if it works. You said earlier, before, this was not satisfying. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to accept it. And we Again, we will monitor your condition, but we shall see if we can at least keep you stable, if not satisfied. Yes. Yes, whatever. Whatever it takes. Mm. Furthermore, I stand up at this point. It's almost as if I'm happy to be moving on from the conversation, because while she was having her break down and Paul was being quite comforting. I just felt very uncomfortable. It wasn't that I didn't understand. I did. But I don't... I can't talk to people about that sort of thing and I was awkward. But now I seem more myself. Furthermore, in regard to the incident, the good news is that there was a lot of things going in your favour. Number one, Kitwara's operation on you was haphazard. I only agreed to monitor because I had no choice really at the time. I couldn't have let her run it by my, herself. Due to this, collateral damage is at least usable in your situation. I know that doesn't feel good for you, but I can assure you it's why we are still going to be able to keep you in the loop. It's not your fault what happened, not entirely. But if that individual had been more professional, you would not have even been in the situation in the first place. But then, someone else might have fallen. This is how it is. And... I think we better leave this... 
sustenance with you and you will have some sort of access no, at all times. No, 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 it, no, it, it doesn't work like that. I've already classified that apparently it has something to do with freshness. Not entirely sure what, but no, it needs to be fresh. Don't worry, I'll have men on rotation. Okay. Oh, but she just drained an entire person. She's going to have to do with a blood bag, unless you want to have all our staff woozy. We cannot take blood from our own staff. I already have. And it's not truly your concern, Paul. Trust me, I'm the doctor. I know how much safely to take. From volunteers. Yeah, I will never drink from another person like that again. Ever. I'd rather drink the dead blood. It's... I uh, start wiping my tears away. I never know what's going on with myself. I... Everything, everything is just so fucked up. Well, we're getting closer. Now, keeping on track, <sighs> keeping on track. It helps to keep on track, Paul, as well. First of all, here are some notes to read in your own time on our current investigation. Yeah, Obviously, sure. once you've read it, destroy it. So I hand over the shorthand that she would understand. It's like police shorthand and codes we've already discussed. But she would understand. It's One thing you might find particularly interesting is that Javeria is alive. The girl? Yes. Okay. Isaac Khan's daughter I, I need, came back to life. I need to tell you something that I haven't told you. A one. And I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe because I wasn't sure what would happen to me if you... And it felt good to know that there were someone out there. But... Fuck. Okay. Okay. After... In the alley. After we discovered the bomb. There was a man. And he was also inside the video... Uh, the video shop. He looked... Uh, the Turkish? The Mediterranean? Yes. I think that is... Rudy. Rudy? And the reason I think that... Is because he showed... Me something. He showed me... A black... Dog foot. <laughs> and I don't know how this... Is... How, how anything of this... It doesn't make sense, but I'm pretty sure that he is the same as the black dog, and that he knows about me. The black dog is a person. I, I, I don't know. That maybe also that is why I haven't told you because it's so strange. But maybe. Did he say something to you? No. I didn't know. Sure. I didn't know. He if, just. Yeah, he just. He just showed me, like, I. I see you. I know you, and and I. I didn't know if I want, wanted to kill him, or ask him questions. But then you came, and the moment was over. And oh, fuck. I just saw him turn and go. Yes. I was wondering because he did seem menacing at one point. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. Why would he do that? Why would he reveal himself to you? He, has, he trusts you. No! I, I haven't spoken to him. Not a word. Um... But you say he showed you... He showed you... A leg that was a dog leg. Yes! He lifted up his foot from his shoe. And it was a black paw. So wait. Focusing on what we can know. Rudy is confirmed to be what a Turkish gentleman you met. Yes. 
night. You saw him too. He was inside the the video store. He wasn't there. It was just you and me and Shirley. Oh. I look at her with a sort of understanding look. What? He was in the lab. Qu what? Francis was in the lab. He wasn't with yeah, us on yes, the operation. Of, of course, sorry, I was... Oh, God. But yes, that's how we looked. Uh, middle... Not Middle Eastern, more Mediterranean look. I first thought was Turkish. <sighs> he showed this to you and then just walked away. Yes. And I didn't have time to react. And I was just so confused, so I, I didn't say anything. He seemed to be known by the uh, sh the shop owners perhaps they would be able to give us more details about who he is he seemed almost to work there i wasn't sure with myself Indeed. we need to be careful about this but it would have been good if you'd mentioned this earlier Alice. Yes, but i'm sorry no I'm it's sorry. it's fine it's fine it's fine it's still a valuable lead good make a note of that paul we finally have a face to our man that's good we have a face who obviously knows who Ellis is, and if, by God, I, if we would make the assumption that he is in fact Rudy the dog that we met in the company of Javeria... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh myself and go, oh, I'm sorry, you're implying what, that uh, he can magically turn into a dog? Yes. Look, look, listen to me. We don't know what is possible or not. And until we we need to take everything at face value. What you see is what you get right now. And if this man somehow can transform his leg into a dog paw, we can also assume that he can transform res the rest of his body. I think the the time for for reasonable explanations is over. We just need to accept that these these people, they can do anything. I don't even know what With I can do. All due respect, what if I have such I'm powers? I'm not saying you're entirely... I'm not saying you're not wrong, Ellis. But being the scientist here, I've already discovered several scientific things to all this we know nothing. So let's not go down that route just yet. What I will say is... Obviously, there is a connection, and that's all we need for now. I crouch down in front of you, Ellis, coming closer now that I have been before, and I say, What can you do? I don't know. I, I'm stronger, faster. When I was um, chasing Sarah, I... It was like I... I just used my my body my blood in a in a in a new way and i could i could run faster and i don't know i have it feels like i could do so much more but i i haven't dared to try anything what could you what would you dare to try anything these are things that can we try this in a, some sort of room? Not right now, Paul, but yes, we can later. We can later under proper... Just a minute, Francis. What do you think you... What would you like to try? I don't know. Um, strength? Agility? Um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I, I see pretty well in the dark. But it takes, it's, it's hard to explain. I have to actively use it. And sometimes I get hungry by doing it. Um, In the same way one would actively change the shape of a limb. I don't know. I'm not sure. Click my teeth a little and say, I'm so glad we're talking about just trying things out. Paul, no offense, can I remind you that it's Kitawara's let's just follow Ellis and see what happens that resulted in a man dying. So let's save trying things for safe lab monitored situations. I assure you, I'm as eager as you are. 
but not right now in the cell for fun. That's not what I'm saying, of course. I stand up and I say, catch some rest and uh, have a read through the briefing. Yes. Um, Hang on a minute. I, I sort of hold up a hand to Paul. I wish to offer that she can refuse. I believe it could be quite insightful to her own condition if she joined us for the interview of Khan's daughter. If you want me there, if, if you feel that I can be trusted, I would love to, to get some answers from her as well. Agreed. But I, I also understand if you don't want to risk it, but right now I feel in full control over... I don't feel that hunger, I don't feel... I'm sad and I'm shocked, yes, but not in that animalistic way that it has been sometimes. I'm, I'm fine. I'm just extremely unhappy. I understand. It is my hope, believe it or not, that this can answer some questions for you and finally at least undo the psychological damage that so far you have quite... so far you have admitted to feeling alone and possibly not with us anymore. I'm curious to see what will happen when you see an individual who I'm starting to think could be far more advanced than yourself and well, Paul, for my own studies to see if this creates this bond, this ideological sharing. After all, so far in our studies it seems intriguing that so many sufferers band together. Why is that? Is it purely psychological? Is there something else? Let's see. I had intended for this interrogation to come after nightfall. You would suggest that we do that now instead? Why do we need to wait? It will be a bit hard to stay on your legs. You know that, Alice. And the least bit of sunlight is going to make you even more tired. It's dark and nice. There's no sunlight here, only the artificial light that, yes, burns a bit in your eyes, but nothing more. I seem to to be able to be awake during the day, but everything hurts and I'd rather not. And I think that if you want me capable and alert, you should let me sleep and we do this after You might nightfall. be interested to know that we have not secured the rest of the complex from sunlight, so... Yeah, no. I don't expect you to. Yes, I would suggest yeah. that you get some rest and then we keep doing the work we have. We had something still that we need to look into, Francis, and uh, we come back to you as dark has fallen. I nod and say, I suppose I can begin an initial prognosis on her now before any drastic measures are taken. Very well then, very well. Francis, Paul, thank you, thank you. I just nod. I'll see you after dark. Yeah. I nod as well and sort of depart quickly. As the door closes, you're alone in the room, Gabriel. Your friends don't see you as you strip out of your bloody stained clothes shuffle off into the shower. There, alone, in the glaring light, the fluorescent, slightly blinking light, you see your naked form in the mirror. And you see, as you hear a shrill shout somewhere from the back of your mind, the black hair races on the back of your neck. A thick black tuft of dog's hair.
you have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the chronicle No Man is an Island for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Our storyteller was Martin Erickson, and we were also joined by Anakarin Linder. The music was created by Lola Zasa, and the sound effects are from the fine folks at freesound.org and Sirenscape. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshaubert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, and Julia for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. And remember, death is not the end. <laughs>